What is up, God Gamers? And today, we're going to be doing a tier list for the best legends to play on patch 13.13c. Now, this is a climbing tier list, and hey, if you want to know some of the best comps to play, and that's a lot, they, they go together, comps and legends, then uh, hey, check out my previous video on the best comps to play. Check it out on the channel. I'll leave it in the end card today. So, uh, there was a small patch, but a lot of things have changed, um, and so let's just get into it. Let's start out with our boy Orn right here. Orn. Uh, his value has gone up a little bit with Ezreal's value going down. I think the uh, the legends that give you items, they have kind of like a tango. They go together, and since Ezreal is worth, Orn is now Orn is now better. I'd, I'd put Orn right in the A tier, uh, leaning towards the S tier. Orn is very strong and is very good. Um, let's talk about Ezreal, our boy Ezreal. Ezreal was the god of last patch. He has received a nerf. His nerf is that you no longer get gold with his uh, with his augments um, and on his first augment. And then his second augment, the gold is heavily reduced. Uh, that is going to take Ezreal down quite a bit. And he is going to go down into the B or C tier, honestly. Uh, I'm not sure on where it goes. Honestly, he probably goes right here. I think it's fine to play because playing duo carries is still strong. But I think there's much better things to play in the meta right now that don't require needing these extra items. You can kind of play something else. All right, uh, next up is Poro, and Poro is going squarely into the S tier. Poro is one of the best legends right now. The reason why Poro is one of the best legends right now is because a big part of playing the meta is there's a lot of reroll compositions that are very augment-based uh, from the general augments, for example. Uh, if you get the Noxian augments, you play Noxians, right? If you get the Warwick augment, you play Warwick. If you get Set's augment, you play Set. If you get Double Trouble, you play Set and Talia, right? So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of those type of things, and if you're willing to... A flex around the reroll builds, then Poro is your guy in order to do that. Along the same lines, flexing around uh, some of the reroll builds and some of the things you get offered, Earth Guy. Earth Guy is very good as well for this same purpose, and we're going to put Earth Guy squarely into the S tier. Because what you can do with Earth Guy on this patch is you can take Earth Guy and then whatever early game comp you are presented with or you know the units you kind of get as you're moving into mid game, you can pop your emblems that you take with Earth Guy's augments and, uh, and Earth Guy's augments can allow you to have a stronger build around some of those rear builds. So for example, you can get Noxian emblems for a uh, Noxian emblem so you don't have to run you know terrible units like Samira in that build, that sort of thing. Um, or you know you get void you get void emblems and you get kind of a free top forge pushing into eight void, play the Baron. Um, you can get Ionias, that sort of thing. You can play some of the four cost builds that are still decent. Um, so there's a lot of options when you're playing Earth Guy, and Earth Guy still gives you gold whenever you select a lot of his augments. Uh, next up is Master Yi, and I think Master Yi is pretty solid, one of the best of the combat augments. He probably goes into the A tier, or he goes into the B tier, but if I put him into the B tier, then Ezra has to go down. So just know that I don't feel super strongly about this A tier, but it's around A-ish B tier, and along the same lines with our... Uh, combat Andes. We're going to put Vladimir up here. Vladimir is very decent as well, especially if you want to try to play some of the four cost builds. Uh, Vlad works really well in the four cost builds, but again, four cost builds aren't super strong on this patch. Not that the four cost builds are bad. It's just that it's easier to play reroll um, or play Dragon King. Uh, it's just kind of like a weird, there's a weird spot that everything is, is kind of in right now is you either play three cost or legendaries. Um, you can play the four cost builds. It's just there are uh, the tempo of the lobby is strange in which by the time you hit your four cost builds, the Dragon King players are hitting their five cost builds and you got out tempoed by the three cost builds. Uh, so four costs are in a very strange spot right now. And I think Vlad uh, works best with a lot of the four cost builds opposed to some of the three cost builds where I think you'd be better off just playing Poro, Earth, um, or Orn uh, for the most part. But I still think Vlad is a good legend and definitely is playable here. Um, Vagar, I think Vagar is actually fine. I think he gets some buffs on next patch. I'm going to put him in the B tier right here. He's just not as good as the other two combat ones. Um, and yeah, I, I'll put him right here. He's fine though. Pingu. Uh, Pingu. Uh, I really like Pingu's prismatic augment. If I'm being honest, I used to be a big hater. And I think items aren't like that crazy right now. I don't know. He probably goes in B tier or C tier. I'll go ahead and put him into the B tier since Ezreal is residing in the B tier. You know what? Screw Ezreal. He's making my list hard to make. So let's go here. Let's put him back in the C tier. He's making it hard to make. All right. Up next is Caitlyn. Caitlyn, I'm also going to put in the C tier. I'm not a Caitlyn believer. That's just a personal preference of mine. I think there's just, if you want to play strong early game, there's better options. And I think if you, again, I get a lot of comments from people who are like, this works great in my games. Uh, yeah. If you're in low elo, 
Caitlyn is great uh, because the for getting the four cost thing and it's so strong and you can just force around that, right? Uh, but if you play in higher elos, you'll just gallop tempoed in the mid game uh, and then you'll fall your comp will fall off really hard because you took a prismatic to get a four cost unit. Okay, so that's why I always rate her super low. But if she's working in your games, don't let me stop you from playing her. Okay, Tom King, the River King. Uh, River King is going to go into the B tier. And the reason why he's going into the B tier, not anywhere higher, is because he is just not as good as a soul. Uh, the, the dominant strategy around um, around playing for legendaries and that sort of thing is more so built around a soul right now, opposed to Tom Kinch. And I always just kind of have this tango between a soul, a soul and Tom Kinch. They're very similar type of legends. And I just think a soul is better for getting that job done. And along the lines of a soul, a soul is going straight up into the S tier. Everybody has discovered the Dragon King strategy from China. Um, and yeah, so essentially, like I said, on the comp studio and right now, is there's pretty much two ways to play the game right now that are very dominant. is playing around three and two cost reroll comps and playing for an early legendary comp. That's why the four cost comps don't feel super great. I think Tom Kinch is a little bit better for playing for the four cost comps. Uh, you get the early level eight. Uh, doesn't get quite quite as quickly to level nine as Asol does, as well as Asol. After you hit... Uh, <clears throat> After you hit that 50 gold threshold, you don't even have to be that weak. You can actually play a lot of tempo because from, from his gold and prismatic augment. Um, I think you can tempo a little bit earlier in the game than you can uh, playing Tom Kinch because of his uh, first and second augments uh, at the gold and prismatic tier. All right, up next is Draven, and Draven is going squarely into the B tier, actually. Um, so the only reason why I'm putting him up here is because if you get into a lobby where there's a lot of people playing Dragon King, uh, and you're playing Draven. Like, if you just happen to go in one of those, you can take Draven. Only take Draven's first augment um, if you get a strong early game. The problem with Draven is if you take Draven and you're not presented with a strong early game, you likely have three dead augments, most likely. Like, three dead augment options. But we do get a lot of rerolls. So I think, it, I think if you like to play aggressive and you want to run the risk of taking Draven, and if you get a strong early game, you can take Draven's augment and you can really punish a lot of the players running Dragon King. And you can keep up with their scaling because if you're punishing them, you're getting the extra loot. Um, it's a strategy you can play. But remember, if you want to try playing Draven, do not take his augment unless you are in a super good spot um, in, in the early game. So, you know, you run the risk of having three augments that you don't really want to use. But again, I think he can be strong in the right lobbies. And there you go. All right. Now let's talk about TF. We're going to have a lot of B tiers today. Uh, TF, I'm going to put over here. I, I'm not a huge TF believer on this patch. Uh, but if you want to force Zed, Zed is probably the best hard forcible build on this patch. Uh, I think TF is very good with that composition. Um, I personally think... You should not hard force anything. I think you should play around Poro and Earth and just play around what you're given because there are a lot of two and three cost reroll builds that work. And I think you're just better off doing that. But if you want to just play the game on easy mode, autopilot, uh, take TF and just hard force a build that you like. And that's fine too. I think that is a viable strategy, although I do not think it is the optimal one. Um, let's talk about young brad young brad has gotten some buffs uh recently uh caretaker's favor uh is nice i don't know i've seen some people playing him lately and i think he could be fine uh but i'm going to put him in like the c plus tier he's gonna go slightly above ezreal but still below these other guys right here i don't feel good about putting him in b tier i also don't feel good about putting him in c tier so um yeah there he goes all right our boy lee sin our boy Lee Sin, I always rate Lee Sin very lowly, and I get a lot of comments about it. And I've, I, you know, since I have been getting a lot of comments, I started testing a lot of Lee Sin. Lee Sin, I think, is actually kind of decent on this patch. Uh, so, if you don't know, I'll probably make a dedicated video about Lee Sin and about Lee Sin's augments because so many people play this wrong. Even in Master Tier, I've seen in my games, people taking his augments and completely not knowing how to play uh, with. <laughs> Uh, with the with the refresh one, uh, what, what what's it called again? I can't think right now. But you know what I'm talking about. You get a free refresh every round. I don't know why I can't think of the name. Uh, and then his prismatic is you get one gold every round plus you get uh, refreshes as you as you level equal to your level, right? So the refresh one, the gold tier, is a tempo. It's a tempo augment. Please do not use it to reroll one cost. It is terrible to reroll one cost. You might get your you sometimes you get your reroll one cost super early. But most of the time, you just grief your econ, grief your board. And I have read some comments before where people are like, well, you fail to understand that you could just have your upgraded units on your bench and you could just have the weak 
have the weak units out there so you can full loss streak. Uh, yeah, but then you're taking a gold augment so you can hold upgraded units on your bench. Just think about that. Think about it. Think about the opportunity cost, okay? Um, so if you want to take the gold tier augment on Lee Sin, here are the two ways you want to play it. You want to play tempo, like you're you're just playing aggressive, you're getting your two stars, you're tempoing into like a four cost or a late game comp, that sort of thing. Or you use it to also tempo, but you use it to collect your two and three cost reroll build. Uh, and so you use it to go to go to fast level seven without having to reroll. Um, and then you can roll and you have like a decent decently strong board from the refresh, right? And then you get to uh, and then you get to roll it down from there. So that's a way that you can play Lee Sin. And so I'm gonna put Lee Sin in the B plus tier. Um, let's put him over here. He's B plus. I don't think he's quite as good as these guys, but he's actually my preferred legend to play on the patch. I haven't been playing much of the patch. If I'm be honest, I'm really not having fun playing the game right now. Uh, I think the game is actually fine. It's just a personal preference. The only metas I really enjoy are four cost flex metas and four costs um, seem to be one of the worst strategies to play right now. And really that's just all I enjoy playing. But when I do play, I play Lee Sin and I play Tempo and you know, I, I, have, I have some fun uh, punishing some people in the early game, some of the Dragon King players. Uh, and so I think Lee Sin is fine. So here's my tier list guys. Again, to recap, these are the probably the best ones here. Uh, these these two are the best general ones. I think Earth Earth Poro and probably Orn um, are some of the best generalists that you can play on this badge. Um, and then Master Yi and Vladimir you can play if you have um, like a specific strategy in mind or um, or I think they're just generally good. They offer some decent augments, but I just think a lot of times you're better off just taking Poro and playing around some of the trait specific augments. And then Dragon King if you want to play that very specific Dragon King strategy to. Go legendary, play your Belveth carry, play full legendary board. Think that's good right there. Um, and then, yeah. Anyways, the ones I would not necessarily recommend playing right now is uh, Caitlyn is the only one I wouldn't really recommend playing. But again, if you're in lower ELOs or or whatever and you're having a lot of success with Caitlyn, then awesome, man. I think that's very cool for you. Uh, then keep doing that. But that's the only one I really wouldn't recommend. And I just, I think Ezreal is still fine. Dual carries are good. Um... But I just, I just think you're better off just playing some of the other legends, personally. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Good luck climbing, and I can't wait for next patch. I love you all, and I love TFT.